Uh, what is the latest right now? Just update us. We're hearing sort of conflicting reports. It's still closed. It's not still closed. W what's the situation? Yeah, so, so uh, the, the main artery here on Church Road that leads to the Ambassador Bridge uh, is open right now for U.S. bound truck traffic, but any traffic coming from the United States into Canada uh, is still blocked and, and that is entirely shut down uh, that one direction of travel. So it, it is a frustrating situation because you have so many folks who will cross the bridge on a daily basis to deliver loads to Ford or Chrysler or GM uh, or other or Kroger or grocery stores. Uh, so many deliveries that happen here, uh, eight to 10,000 trucks a day. If they get stuck over there and there's no pathway for them, come, for them to come back, then it just further exacerbates the problem. Uh, you're looking, folks, at a live shot um, uh, as this is, I think, Church Street going right into the Ambassador Bridge. And you see one side uh, is clear. The other side is basically stopped. Um, how many trucks are impeding traffic right now? How many protesters are on the bridge, Mayor? Well, you know, the, the, the estimate that I had just a few minutes ago is about 150 individuals. Uh, that are that are on site and so police are trying to negotiate they were successful at negotiating uh, the reopening of the northbound traffic they're trying to work with this group it's a bit of a leaderless group Evan and I'll, I'll tell you I'm not quite sure uh, that the message they're trying to convey is actually the way this freedom convoy started which was as you said related to vaccine mandates to return to Canada it has grown to be something much different and much larger and I'm not sure everyone who's there even understands what their messaging is. And so it's a, it's a complex situation, it's volatile, it certainly is fluid, uh, and police are doing all they can to de-escalate the situation so as not to inflame this any further and have more folks come here and set up shop. Yeah, okay, but first of all, what, a lot of folks are wondering about just what the law says as we look at, uh, at live shots there, Mayor. Like, what is the penalty for impeding this bridge, a, uh, a public artery like this? Uh, you know, I, I, I don't actually have all of that, but certainly there are laws that, you know, this, this, this let's call it what it is. This is an illegal blockade. This is a, an illegal blockade that is blocking a vital trade route between the United States and Canada. And almost a full third of, of trade uh, between our two countries comes through this particular border crossing. So it is an essential route, and this activity is illegal. Uh, but we have people here on the ground, and I, I wanna make sure people know this. Uh, you know, the Windsor Star today, I read the front page, the front story is about this particular issue. There is a lady quoted in the paper who lives 20 minutes away from here who's participating in this blockade, and she feels, and she's quoted as saying, this is such an important issue for her that if she is willing to die uh, for this particular issue. And that really speaks to the type of people who are here and the volatility of the people who are here. Police last night had- but, uh, so, 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 so I just had the federal minister of transport on, Mayor Dilkins. Is your city asking for assistance from the province, from the federal government? What, what about your counterpart in Detroit? Like this is a privately owned bridge, uh, but it's vital. So, so what help do you need to, to get the protesters off the bridge? Well, they're, they're actually not on the bridge proper. They're on the city property. And that, that it's kind of the frustrating piece here is that they're blocking uh, and impeding the ability for trucks to actually cross the bridge into Canada. And so to answer your question directly, what we've need and the messages uh, that we've sent up the chain is that we need an additional 100 officers here. And we know there's a poll and we know Ottawa police is asking for additional support. Uh, but at the end of the day, this is not about having a protest in front of City Hall or in front of Queen's Park or a uh, protest, uh, you know, at the seat of the federal government. This is about blocking an essential trade corridor uh, that thousands, I would say tens of thousands of Canadian families rely on smooth and efficient border crossings to put, to put food on their table. Uh, and so this is having a, a negative impact for a lot of Canadians from coast to coast in this country. And the longer this border crossing is closed, the more of an impact it will have. Can you just tell me, Mayor, before I let you go, what is, for every day this route is blocked, what is the economic cost? How many people can't get back and forth? The economic cost for the country and for, for your city in particular, what are we losing every day here? Well, I'll tell you, Evan, depending on the day, if it's a weekend or a weekday, you have eight to 10,000 trucks who use that bridge and the economic impact is 300 to $500 million a day. Uh, and so it, it, is, it is absolutely crucial and any, any ongoing closure of this border crossing will have a significant impact on the economy of our nation. And that's why it cannot be allowed to continue. Uh, and so this is, not, this is way more uh, than a municipal roadway. 
Uh, we can deal with issues on municipal roadways. This is a roadway leading to a federal border or to a, an international border crossing that has federal impacts, and we will certainly need additional support. And our chief is saying we need an additional 100 officers here uh, to help support the resources we have on the ground right now. Winds are calling for 100 more officers, 300 to $500 million a day, and it's already lost a day. Windsor Mayor Drew Dilkins, uh, let's stay in touch, sir. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks, Evan.